and gentlemen, members and friends, it's Matt Bailey here, your National Ambassador and Branch Director for the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society Australia. Um, I've done a lot of videos lately on different releases and things coming up at the Society, uh, but one that I wanted to focus in on is one that's really special in the September outturn. Now, September is all about the gathering. It's a gathering cast. We've got a full cast coming, which you'll see lots of video and things coming up for that, of course, which is a cast that was picked out and tasted by from members uh, around the country. And then it was actually a member who named the cast. We've got lots of names from members to try and name it, but there's one in particular that we really liked. And so we've gone with that one. Uh, I won't reveal who that name, who that is, or which member that is, or what cask the, the name's taken on. But I did want to just touch very, very briefly on this special release in September outturn, a kick up the old bodega. Now, of course, the word bodega referring to an old Spanish bodega that uh, matures sherry. So that gives us a um, uh, an indication of both cask type and flavor in a, in a sense here as well. It's in the deep, rich and dried fruits flavor profile, quite a popular one. 80.32 is the code. So we've only seen 32 casks in the last nearly 40 years of the society. So very few. And this is an 11 year old from a first fill ex Oloroso hogshead at 58.8%. So a nice, richly sherried whiskey here. And it's one of 296 bottles. So about what you'd expect from a hoggy. A no nonsense and surprisingly powerful dram with a big hearty kick of sherry and many satisfyingly sweet notes of cakes, fruits, and spice. You know, we've had some 80s recently, <clears throat> some code 80s come through, which have been really exciting releases, like uh, Maple Mountain Spring was one from a little while ago, that was like 80.20 or something. Uh, 80.23, Perfectly Prickly, one of my personal favorites. That was a nine-year-old spicy and sweet whiskey. Fantastic whiskey. Uh, I wish I kept a bottle of that for myself, actually. But, you know, what? The, these, we are uh, here for our members first and foremost. So, uh, this one, however, is the next 80 that we're seeing. And the, the spirit that comes out of Distillery 80 is, is often extremely clean uh, and almost like mapley and uh, syrupy in some ways, which is a, not a distillery we even see a core range from, let alone really any other releases from very often. There was a flora and fauna release, a 43% release. When I say was, there might still be. I haven't seen it around in a long time, but then again, I haven't really been keeping track. Uh, this, however, is a single cask, cask strength expression from that distillery that the Society Tasting Panel have picked out. Now, I just want to talk about sherry casks for a second and sherried whiskies. I remember uh, earlier on in my whiskey journey, like I'm going to say 2002, 2003 era, buying a sherried whiskey then was often quite a risk because there are a lot of sulfur candles used in the uh, production process of preparing those sherry casks to be filled with whiskey. Now, I won't go into too much detail about sulfur candles, but I will link an amazing article just below in the description of what that was in the industry and, and why that was used. In fact, that article you're gonna read, you can read below, is uh, written by our, our very own, um, one of our directors and uh, cellar master, Andrew Durbage, and New South Wales State Manager, who, um, who has written this uh, great article on the history of them. But uh, in terms of, like back then, uh, it's safe to say when you bought a sherry whiskey, especially a single cask or a cask strength release, um, there was sometimes a, a, an element of risk that the, the whiskey you're going to get was it was going to have cask sulfur and elements to it. And when that happens, uh, that gets you notes of things like um, like rotten egg, burnt matchstick, um, sort of like hot steel, uh, which uh, is is considered to be undesirable compared to spirit sulfur, which can often get you those nice meaty notes, those gamey notes, those rich spices out of spirit sulfur. Um, spirit sulfur you see in distilleries like your Krigalikis, Mortlax, Balmenac, things like that. Whereas cask sulfur wasn't really sort of, you could spot in many, from many distilleries that used sherry casks. And some distilleries often didn't do much in the way of sherry maturation, but some did a lot, as, you, as you'll probably know, the likes of your Glenfarclas, McAllen, Abelauer, etc. So, uh, but in terms of the single cask world, you often see, you know, sherry casks used across a multitude of different distilleries. Now. Um, that was 10 years ago. These days, it's so much safer to pick a sherry whiskey because unless you had a blind spot to sulfur, in which case I envy you, because if you can enjoy a really heavy cask sulfur, and there, you know, there were actually some cask sulfur elements to some whiskies I've tried in the past, which I actually found somewhat desirable, if not desirable, interesting, and, and not undesirable, let's put it that way. Not something I'd reach for regularly though. 
Uh, in terms of distilleries like this one that have already a very clean spirit, pairing it up with a really clean sherry, whis uh, sherry cask uh, has produced in this case a very exciting uh, and you know, I'd say this is much more in the typical vein of what a good sherry whiskey should be. When you get an ex-bourbon cask whiskey, it's often notes of those sweet vanillas, a um, uh, bit of candy cane, things like that. But in, in this is a different kind of sweetness. This is sort of a darker sweetness. This is like fruitcake, spices, rum and raisin chocolate kind of notes. And I definitely get all those kind of things off this whiskey. I mean, that, that, even that tasting on the front about um, you know, a no-nonsense and surprisingly powerful dram with a big hearty kick of sherry. It is, it is a very rich, no-nonsense, big sherry whiskey. And if you like your big sherry whiskies, which especially, <laughs> I'm gonna say especially over Christmas time, this would, perf this would pair up perfectly as well with some chocolates, with some fruit cake, uh, and just be a very enjoyable drop. Now we've got a few of these to go around thankfully and I know that our sherry whiskies at the society, the quality has been going up and up and you know I'm it's safe to say this is where we're, we're reaching this point at the moment where these are some of the most exciting and vibrant and complex sherry whiskies. Just talking on that point for a second you often have some sherry whiskies out there that are sherry bombs for lack of a better phrase. I, I find that phraseology a bit sort of dated but it's those where they you may as well just be drinking sherry. You may as well just be drinking a high proof sherry, uh, which is fine, but they're often a little bit monodimensional, I find. Whereas you get some whiskies like this uh, and some other recent sherry whiskies we've had and some coming up as well, that are very much in the, they've got so much more to offer. There's a complexity between whether it be an extra maturation or a full maturation or whether it be, um, it showcases um, the distillery quality, the distillate quality. So you're actually still getting elements of barley and uh, fusel oils and uh, a bit of sort of grape, fresh laundry. Yeah, this, it's it's just lovely that sort of dark spices and fruit cake, maraschino cherry. And hugely enjoyable and very drinkable, even at that proof, 58.8. You almost think it'd be too big, it's not at all. So that one's coming out, September out to him, 80.32, a kick up the old bodega. Hope you've learned a little bit more about sherried whiskies. Hope you've learned a bit more about this coming release. Of course, it is gathering month. We're really excited to share this whiskey and many others with you <laughs> this month for the gathering in the Scotchport Whiskey Society. I'll see you all soon, of course. I'll catch you around for our events, our gathering events, our virtual tasting, our mystery malts, everything coming up this month is uh, very exciting. Of course, you can taste the full gathering out to him at both Captain's Balcony in Sydney, Whiskey and Element in Melbourne, and of course, of, uh, of, by ordering the bottles off our website and, and, and pick up a few things along the way. I'll see you all soon. Sanjava, cheers, Kanpaya, and best wishes. Bye.